The other thing to recognize is for um, the facial abnormalities for Down syndrome, you're going to be thinking of the flat facies, the primary epicanthal folds, as well as the simian crease. The heart defects for Down syndrome is going to be endocardial cushion defects. So what I think of is endocardial cushion defects for Down syndrome. Down syndrome patients also have issues with VSD and ASD. Now, how are they gonna test endocardial cushion defects on the USMLA? They're going to say bilateral or unilateral, but bilateral AV valve, atrioventricular valve regurgitation. Remember that your endocardial cushions are going to be extremely important in forming your normal valves. Pulmonary hypertension is also going to be seen in Down syndrome patients that could be due to their obstructive symptoms from their upper airway, but knowing the presentation of pulmonary hypertension and specifically a pulmonary hypertensive crisis is important. As you know, these patients are going to have a dilated pulmonary artery on their echo. They're going to have a loud S2. They could even have signs of right heart failure with the liver edge being down. And remember, in pulmonary hypertension, usually the lung sounds are going to be clear. From a GI standpoint, patients with Down syndrome are going to be um, predisposed to Hirschsprung's disease and duodenal atresia. Let's go through how does the USMLA ask these questions. A full-term male with trisomy 21 was noted to have progressive abdominal distension on the second day of life. No stool since birth. Again, failure to pass meconium. As you can see on the imaging, there is a narrowed transitional zone followed by a distended loop, that big megacolon. And so this is very characteristic of Hirschsprung's disease, which is an aganglionic colon. Remember that embryologically, in your Auerbach's myenteric plexus, the ganglion cells are going to migrate, which are derived from neural crests, from the proximal to the distal colon. And in patients with Hirschsprung's disease, that is not going to be fully developed. Down syndrome patients also have bilious, uh, if a Down syndrome patient who has bilious vomiting, um, especially shortly after birth, think of duodenal atresia and watch for that double bubble sign on your uh, x-ray. From a musculoskeletal standpoint, you're going to recognize that Down syndrome patients are going to have issues with atlantoaxial instability. And so let's look at how the USMLA can test that. They can give a patient who is going to have upper motor neuron signs after sedating, after a sedating procedure in the OR. So upper motor neuron signs, those are going to be hyperreflexia. They're going to have hypertonia, right? Basically, they severed their spinal cord and essentially these patients can be quadriplegic because of the fact that they have atlantoaxial instability. The, the atlas and the axis, those upper cervical vertebrae are not going to be as stable. And especially when they're going in the OR and they're gonna be hyperextending their neck, that's also, that can uh, predispose a Down syndrome patients from uh, having the severing of the cord. From a hemonc standpoint, Down syndrome patients, they can ask about the uh, ALL, which is going to be commonly um, related to Down syndrome patients, but also AML, which is acute megakaryoblastic uh, leukemia. And typically that's classically taught, taught as being a complication before the age of five, okay? Finally, neurologically, this is later down the road, but Down syndrome patients have a predisposition to early onset dementia. And that early onset dementia is going to be due to the fact that they have three copies of the amyloid precursor protein. And that amyloid precursor protein, if you have those three copies due to your trisomy, you can actually have more of a likelihood to be broken down these um, APPs into A beta plaques via beta uh, secretase uh, cleavage. And so more A beta plaques, more early onset um, Alzheimer's.